Welcome to the Manufacturing Matters Podcast with the Council of Industry. Join us as we bring you inspiring stories, interviews, and insights from across the Hudson Valley that will revolutionize the way you think about manufacturing. This podcast is proudly sponsored by PKF O'Connor Davies, a leading accounting and advisory firm dedicated to helping businesses thrive in the manufacturing sector. With their industry knowledge and strategic guidance, PKF O'Connor Davies ensures that manufacturers have the financial insights and support they need to achieve success. Johnny Ann Hansen, Vice President of the Council of Industry, welcome to your own podcast. It is nice to be on this side of the microphone. <laughs> it's great to have you. So we should let, tell our listeners that while you typically are only a few feet away from me at this particular moment, you are 3,000 miles away. You are actually uh, in Canada. Yeah, Squamish, British Columbia, um, where the internet seems to be okay enough to do this podcast. Awesome. That's all we can ask for. So thanks for doing this. And we're here to talk uh, primarily about the evolution of our, our job board, which we're now rebranding as the Hudson Valley Manufacturing Career Hub. Why don't you yeah, talk a little bit about what the hub is and, and why, why we're doing that? Yeah, I mean, I think it's an exciting transition because we've always wanted to connect individuals seeking jobs to the jobs that are currently available with our membership. And uh, this really gives us the platform to connect with high school students and recent graduates, people looking for internships, entry-level jobs, as well as what we've been doing kind of all along is getting to that job seeker market. And I think this gives us a way to have conversations with educators and guidance counselors and students. And I always make the joke of like parents and aunts and people who forward emails and say, you should apply for this job, but I, it, it'll be nice to have it all in one spot and easily accessible on both sides, both on the employer side to get their jobs up there quick and easy. And then also on the job seeker side where they can upload their resumes and, and apply for the jobs that are currently out there. Right. So the, the word hub like kind of implies yeah. that there are also spokes and wheels out there. And, uh, you know, maybe you can kind of talk about those different markets, whether that's like the community colleges or schools. I mean, it is also, I guess what we're, we're trying to accomplish here is, is you know, working on long-term pipelines as well as near-term matching. Yeah. Yeah. I think it's yes. And right. I mean, the, the reality is that our members need their jobs to reach everybody. Um, but part of our role, I think at the council is, is getting that message out beyond just through Indeed, right? Like that's helpful and that's good. But realistically, we need the high schools, let's just say that as an example, right? We really not only want them to be able to have these X number of students looking for jobs on May of 2024 to be able to get their resumes out there and apply for jobs, but realistically, we need them to be able to look at that as a point place to say, look at the types of jobs that are out there here in the Hudson Valley. Look at how high tech they are, or look at how accessible they are. Look at how close they are to your house. Like you probably right. didn't even know that. Right? right. So I think having it, and you, you had said in those different audiences. So one audience I think is, is the high school market, but it's not just graduating seniors. It is teachers and guidance counselors and administrators to just say, you know, when you're talking about STEM fields, when you're talking about technician jobs, these jobs are out there and here's a place that you can go and look at them. You were hoping that you can use them in classroom presentations when you're working on your manufacturing day projects, yeah, right. when you're working on work-based well, it's, learning It's funny projects. you say that. I mean, we kind of learned that, you know, at Valley Central, Nick Longo, one of the teachers there yeah. does do that, right? He like does kind of pick a company and, and uses that in their class exercises and asks the kids to do research on them and what the jobs are and what they do. It's just, yeah. yes. And, and I'm really happy that you said that because that's another example. The way that we hope this to be a hub is that, you know, at that school, they had a student teacher coming into their technology program who is a recent graduate and they made that introduction to us and we're like, well, hey, if you're a new student teacher in the area, you should go and visit MPI and you should go and visit these other different companies and to see that connection. And we want that new student teacher to see this manufacturing hub 
Right. And to say, okay, I get it now. I see the interconnectedness of that. So there's a lot of really good examples at that high school level. And I guess um, it's, it is literally just yes. And so of course we want to reach anybody who's, you know, going to be in the market, but realistically we want to get to like the freshman students who don't know anything about anything, but in a couple right. of years are going to be out there looking and they, they, they want to just have the exploration mindset of like what other careers are out there what other opportunities could be could there right. be and so we're i guess we're kind of thinking that the job is what everything flows from the job so with the posting or the need right and i guess whether mm -hmm. that's an engineering job or a technician job or an entry level machine operator job or a marketing job whatever it is it flows from there so if, sure. we, if to this to the extent that those jobs are known and available mm -hmm. and in a single spot it's a place yeah. where that greater it's gonna community be a it's going to be a win. And so that same concept and mindset that I said with the high schools, you apply that exact same thing with our community colleges. So we have wonderful community college relationships, right? And not only do we want the job seekers that are coming out of community colleges to know that, but we want their, their administration to know that this is where the jobs are. And then beyond that, so our relationships with four-year institutions, I mean, we have, we have our own success story in hiring a local student who was attending the University of Buffalo because we took our job board and we posted that up to there and we were able to attract that. So that's the kind of interconnectedness that I think this brings us. And that's the education side, right? So you have actual students, you have the teachers, administrators, directors, career center, employees, everybody, literally everybody. But <laughs> beyond that, I, I think there are just decision makers within our community that need to know that too. So it's not that every single person needs to understand and see how many jobs there are, but it would be nice if our local decision makers or elected officials or, you know, Department of Labor representatives also just saw those types of jobs. So when they were speaking to anyone who is a future pipeline individual and is, is exploring their path, that they're thinking in addition to the jobs that they see on TV and they hear in their classroom, they're also aware that these are the types of jobs that are out there. And to be clear, yeah. people can still apply for this job, right? It's still like Absolutely. the number one They're point real is jobs. Like, it's still the main right. point here sure. is to, like, to sure. get a candidate tomorrow. Absolutely. And so if you think about it that way, if I'm an employer, you know, sometimes, listen, our members are spectacular and they get it and they want to be in the long game as well. But sometimes they're just like, yeah, that sounds lovely, but I have to fill this job right now. So you're like, you know, third grader that you're so concerned about is really not relevant to me today. So we want to make sure that this job board and the hub continues to stay relevant on the World Wide Web, right? So it'll continue to post those jobs out to the bigger atmosphere <clears throat> and show um, any job seeker who's out there right now that you could apply right this second. So if you were a student looking for a job today, click the button, it's easy to apply. Upload your resume, create a profile. You can use that ongoing, apply for whatever job's available now. If you're just a job seeker and you're out there, whether you see it on the Council of Industries website on AHV, MFG jobs, or if you just find it through Indeed or Google jobs or however it is, it doesn't matter. There's a button, click the button, it's that simple. And you apply for that job that's available right now. And the hiring manager can see that and can, trans can transition that. But what's nice about the way that we're trying to approach this <clears throat> hub is we can hopefully help our current members fill their current positions while simultaneously using that information to help educate the pipeline. So we're not saying we have to do two things. We want you to fill your jobs and, right. you know, also help us on this pipeline project. It's really, we want to help you fill your jobs. And with those jobs, we want to build awareness for the next generation of manufacturing employees. So you said something earlier about mm -hmm. the emergence of particular jobs. That's all well and good. It's nice to hear about your pipeline. It's nice to hear about that. Sure. That sounds very familiar to something you said <laughs> six years ago <laughs> that yeah, kind of, of like birthed our job board, hvmfgjobs.com. And so talk a little bit about that and then how, then the evolution to the, yeah, what and the we, trans what we're transition now. to how this, yeah. 
I mean, so the bottom line is that we need to try and help our members and trying to provide value and resources, right? And we know that larger companies with, you know, a huge workforce staff can afford to buy into um, a, a applicant tracking system where they can get all the bells and whistles. But realistically, when you think about how a small to mid-sized manufacturer in the Hudson Valley is trying to allocate their resources, it's going to be difficult for them to compete at that level, right? So I think it was 2018. We were kind of coming into the same situation. We were recognizing that it was hard to compete with those national companies if you didn't have the systems and the software. So we started right. this concept with... Mm -hmm. What if we uh, purchased this applicant tracking system and software and we made it available in a sub subscription model to our manufacturing companies and they could like post that. their jobs? Sub subscription. Sub -subscription. I yeah, think you so, might have coined that yeah, phrase. Yeah. I know. <laughs> say that three times fast. But it would allow them for like a fraction of the cost to be able to post their jobs and they would be scraped through the aggregator and they would be available in the larger employment sphere while also providing them resources. So that was how we dipped our toe into it originally to say, and, and, you know, you mentioned this and kind of alluded to this, but backing up one degree before that is that, you know, we really, we have an apprenticeship program, right? And we're super proud of the apprenticeship program. And we know that it has been very successful and helpful to a lot of companies. But when you talk to a company and they say, yeah, that's great, but where's the apprentice? Right. Well, and that's particularly like, true. And that was particularly true in 2017, 2018, yeah, where, right. I mean, it was, it was really, you know, yeah. the beginning yeah. of the skills gap crisis. Uh, was, was Yeah. And so what we were trying to do is like, well, let's help you build a pool of people who want this job. Let's get the word out there, make it easy for them to apply and then build the pool of people. And then conceptually, once you have that individual and a handful of individuals for those jobs, maybe at some point in time, you do need some training for them and you do want to put them through a program like this. So chickens and eggs as we kind of went along. And I think for the last several years, it's been super successful. I mean, we've filled hundreds of jobs. We have thousands and thousands of candidates that have applied for jobs in our job board, which is, you know, always warms my heart because it's says that person took the time to create a profile, to upload their resume because they, they gave some thought to working in manufacturing, whether or not they got that job. They might have not got that, that particular job, but they're in the system. And so that's been working really well. It's been a good resource to our members and um, we're really proud of it. But what kind of came to late, I think in 23, 24 is, you know, it needs to be a little bit more and the awareness is still not where it needs to be. We're never going to get everybody to know everything. I mean, that's just not magic. We don't have that ability, but we could do better with our resources. We have a, a wonderful network of educators and we have great community college partners and we have good relationships at the county level and at the regional level and, and all of those partners could have a better awareness of these types of jobs to help us address the skills gap and just also fill the immediate need. Yeah, and I think it's interesting too. So, you know, the we called it the collaborative recruiting initiative when, when yeah. we kicked it off. And it is striking to me how different the world is. Yeah. Oh, absolutely. As, I, as anybody noticed, the world's different than it was in 20, <laughs> yeah. 2018. But Absolutely. part of that was a kind of a learning curve in, in manufacturing, right? I mean, so at that time, manufacturing jobs were better jobs and you know, there was a skills gap, but there wasn't a lot of like crisis in workforce development and mm -hmm. workforce crisis across industries. And so we were really competing just to get people interested into the manufacturing careers. We were providing a resource for our companies to up their game so they could attract yeah. candidates into manufacturing. But really the world turned and the technology and recruiting and the difference in those five years or six years is so dramatic that we really rode with it and provided a tremendous service. At least it feels like it to me, but yeah. now it, we need to get ahead of it again. Yeah. Well, if you think about it, I mean, I feel like we're talking about the 1800s here, but when I, when I started in 2017, the idea of this applicant tracking software was a bit novel. Getting your jobs yeah. out there was a big deal. And now 
Yeah, a lot of payroll companies offer this. They had to, but now it's kind of stepped up a little bit. All of, not all, but a lot of our members have really invested more heavily into their recruiting than they did just a few years ago. Sure. So now it's not so much about just like get the job out there. It's a layer deeper than that. And on the flip side, job seekers, I don't know if you guys have heard this, but have also changed. <laughs> you know, what they're looking for has changed. The way they find their jobs have changed. It's not as old fashioned as it once was. I mean, people are looking for jobs in a more dynamic way. People are looking, they're going to go to your website. They're going to read your website information. They're going to go to your social media. They're going to see what kind of company you are. And we want to be able to provide those resources and evolve with the technology and provide that to them. So I think it would be doing a disservice if we just said like, we had a really good idea in 2017. We launched it in 2018. We're super proud. And we're just going to double down on that. Instead, we have to say, like, we did this. It was really good. It continues to be really good. There is a, a compartment of this that will stay exactly the same and continue to serve that same benefit to those who are using it and make sure that job seekers get it. But realistically, we're going to need to step it up a little bit if we want to speak to that next market, if we want to get the word out there bigger than what we've been doing. So let's talk about getting the word out there. Right. So that is, uh, and you mentioned social media, which I think is going to be obviously the, the main driver of that. And mm -hmm. it is, is the brand of a uh, hub um, going to mm -hmm. help in that regard? I'd like to think so. I mean, we're probably underselling how many people you and I talk to on a daily <laughs> basis. Right. I mean, the, the meetings that we go to the committees that we sit on the boards that we per participate in, uh, I think this gives us a way to have additional conversations and what I think also we maybe overlook is that the people that we talk to talk to a lot of people. <laughs> so I think the word hub and the singular messaging to that will make a difference because it's going to have a bit of a ripple effect. But with that, we also need to do our own social media pro promotions. We also just need to market it big picture, have more conversations, just make it a little bit more obvious. It's user-friendly when you get there, but how do right. we get people to get there? How do we get right. them there? Right. And along those lines, you, you mentioned our wonderful community college partners and four-year schools and, and the high schools and so forth. But I, one of the reasons I'm excited about this is, you know, I, I mentioned the word skills gap earlier. A lot of this... Uh, the dynamism of manufacturing and changing workforce and the changing needs and changing technologies and the evolution. A lot of this is going to be the ability to match current employees and candidates and everyone with pathways, whether that's through our apprenticeship or taking classes at whether it's SUNY Ulster, or SUNY Westchester, or the Mechatronics Lab in Dutchess, it's going to be a way to upskill people as well to help them take the, right. take ownership of their own careers. And also for our employers to, to do that as well, to, to invest in their people. Yeah, absolutely. I think that this is going to be a heavy lift no matter how you slice it. I mean, not just our job board, because that's tiny, you know, small potatoes in comparison to the actual skills gap <laughs> and what's coming. <laughs> but I think that the main way our region can continue to grow and succeed in this is by ensuring that there are pathways, first of all that we do have a way to get an individual from here to there, but more importantly, showing that. So I think what we do with being able to share stories of people who have taken traditional and non-traditional pathways, and then also connecting these dots through the manufacturing hub to, to tell those stories, to connect the dots, to make everything accessible, both to all employers within our sphere here, but also to anyone who just really wants to or should know about jobs in manufacturing. Yeah, you can kind of imagine somebody, you know, I mean, I've, I've, I've used this illustration with, you know, our parallel tool and the, the Go Make It website, which we continue to work on. Um, but, but that idea that somebody could see the path within the region of, I, I see a job, I, I'm kind of interested in engineering and a teacher says, oh, you should check it out. Look at these kinds of jobs that are here and you see the jobs and you say, oh, that's kind of cool. How do I get that degree? And you find out that yeah. you can go to SUNY Duchess and get transferred to SUNY New Paltz and get your bachelor's degree and go on the job board and get an internship that's mm -hmm. advertised with your local company and then get a permanent placement there. I mean, you can kind of see how that's all connected. And that's kind of the, when I hear hub, 
<laughs> that's like, that's an illustration of a hub. I also could see like an HR professional saying, gosh, we just really need to upskill our people. They need to, they need to learn more about, you know, Lean and Six Sigma training. And then they come to the Council of Industry and they see that our website's there and they could, they see that, you know, we're offering training through one of our community college partners. It's just a great way of connecting things, all the things workforce related in Hudson Valley manufacturing. Yeah. And I would add to that. We, you know, we're already doing that. We're already right. doing that in a uh, small yeah. scale through one, we're, we're, right. We're piecemealing it together sometimes and it's a little bit reactive. And I think this could be the glue that allows it to be a little bit more cohesive. And to your story about that, you know, sometimes it's the other way around. It's that there's a student who's displaying their senior project at Dutchess Community College and that the employer who went to your ribbon cutting, you know, right. goes to that senior project event and then, you know, passes their business card along to someone. And that individual gets this job at this company in Middletown, which is kind of exciting. But then that company in Middletown offers tuition reimbursement. And then they go back and they get their degree and then maybe they get another advanced degree. And that's like a real life story. Like that just, that's right. happening, right? The second. So this is just a way you know, it's, things are already happening in small right. pockets, but maybe this will make it a little bit easier on, on each side. Yeah, I'm excited by all of that. And I think there's real opportunities here. And like you said, we're keeping the core of connecting candidates with jobs and, jo sure, and, the and jobs are out there. It's still there. It's yeah. still there. But we recognize that, I guess, and I, I think I'm saying what you just said, but there, we needed to change the value proposition a little bit and expand it yeah. a little bit more so that we are providing that that additional value to the membership. And in, a, in an interesting way too, Johnny, and I know you've said this in the past, is we're just trying to capitalize on what we're already doing and maybe show it off a little mm -hmm. bit more. You know, we're really trying to just explain what things that are already happening, but putting yeah. it in a, in a place with it, with some words. Yeah, I, I'd like to think that that's what we're doing. It feels <laughs> like that's the direction that we're trying to go. And it seems like all the puzzle pieces are there. And and I think this is just a natural next step in the evolution to yeah. um, connecting these dots. Yeah, it's also exciting too. And we've had success through the years in kind of creating that feedback loop to the educators, um, you know, learning from uh, the employers, what their needs are, what their anticipated needs are, and, and communicating that back to educators. And, and I think that this is going to be, you know, obviously not a, the platform itself isn't doing it, but it's facilitating no. those conversations, right? Where educators can yeah. look and they can say, look, there's like, there's 10 jobs here that require fill in the blank, some certain credential, and we should be providing that, or we should ask and make sure that we're meeting their needs. And, I, and it's fostering those conversations and opening those dialogues. Yeah, I mean, I'm not sure that it's worth saying, but you know, the opposite would be would be true too. If we didn't have this at all, mm -hmm. right? Then there's it's just a matter of like I I think that there's something out there. You can go to Indeed, and you right. could Google for jobs, and you could see what's out there. But you know, when you're a you know 17 year old or a 25 year old, and you're Googling for jobs, you're not saying you know, jobs in advanced manufacturing in Poughkeepsie, you're not, that's not what you're Googling. You're, you're like Googling jobs near me, right? Jobs that require this or don't require that. Right. So I think not being there is also, you know, a, a dangerous move. So we need to be there. We need it to be in an easy spot. And then we need to make it accessible really on the employer end. And I think that that's part of the transition too, is that we've decided to shift our subscription model to allow for those companies who want to have the custom reports and the branded portal and things that we, we offer right now, but we really decided to do a, a lower point of entry to get more companies to participate right. because really we want all the jobs. We want to be able to show all the jobs of our members if possible, even if they have <clears throat> their own recruiting board, that's okay for you know a couple hundred bucks a year why not just also put it support the council support the ability to reach out and connect with the community and get your jobs out there too they'll still be out in the regular sphere but let's mm. help us get them to the conversations that we're having let's help us use it as a point place that is you know really important so in the few minutes that we have left what would you want the company that doesn't post on our job board 
Mm -hmm. what do you, or it hasn't yet, what would you like to tell them and why they should? Yeah, well, I would say that it is, you know, multiple levels of support. So on one hand, it's good for the council if you post your jobs with us. It helps us to bring awareness to the industry. As the voice of manufacturing in the Hudson Valley, this is helping us. So it's easy to say, we know this company and we know they hire this type of worker, but it's a lot easier to say, here's a job right now with one of our members and we know they're great. We'd like that. So first of all, there is a little bit of a, this help us help you. What is your Jerry Maguire? Yeah. Help, me help. help you. Yeah. So there's a little bit of the, the help us help you piece. The second part is we're really working on making this be um, painless for the employer. So if you are not already using our job board, you know, just reach out to either any of us and, or info at councilofindustry.org if you're not like in our sphere and you don't know our emails, but reach out to any of us. With your job description, we can set up a username and password for you to go in and see your own candidates if they get hits in that regard, but we can post it within a day or so. We can set that up and, and make it pretty easy for you to do. We're not experts in this by any means, but we can provide some insights about best practices of what other companies have done. So sometimes we'll see a job description come through and we'll say, we know from our experience that if you're not prominently posting your hours, the schedule, the pay rate, it's just getting less attraction. I mean, that's kind of, it seems like common sense when you say it out loud, but sometimes when you're so busy doing this as a a company that's not the thing. And then I would say the the last piece of it is you don't want to not be there. I mean, I don't want to get into the whole FOMO thing, right? <laughs> right. But at, at some point, all of your competitors and employers in the region, their jobs are there. And we want your jobs to be there too, because we want to be able to show that there is diversity in the types of jobs and that there's diversity in the levels of jobs and the background experience necessary to be successful. So you know, I guess it's just that sort of, we really do want access to these jobs. A, we can help you. Perhaps we can help you fill them, but B, you can help us getting the word out and doing that simultaneously. And, and final thought from it, as to hearing what you're saying, in helping us, you are also helping yourself longer term. Absolutely. You could be helping yourself short term. Like right. that, that'd be, that's the goal, right? Right, right, of right. Course. That's the, that's the but, most but longer term, it's, you know, we're here as our mission is to support manufacturers in the Hudson Valley. It is hard enough to run a business. It is hard enough to fill these jobs. It is hard enough to do that. I understand that coming to companies and asking them to take a higher focus on pipeline and big picture and talking to elected officials in the community, right. it's too much. It's too much to ask for every single company, particularly as short resource they are with re regard to human resources, but here's a way that you can get your job out there and possibly just get it filled and help the association and help bring awareness to jobs long-term. Well, great. Johnny Ann, thank you so much for uh, explaining the Hudson Valley Manufacturing Career Hub, and we're excited to launch this. And if people have questions, uh, I'm sure they can reach out to, to you, me, or info at councilofindustry.org. Yeah, thank you so much. I think you can also find some information on our website, which is councilofindustry.org or on the actual manufacturing career hub, which is HVMFG jobs. So hopefully you can check HV, it out there. But... HVMFGjobs.com. .com. Thanks, Thanks for having me, Harold. Thank you for joining us on this episode of Manufacturing Matters, brought to you by the Council of Industry and sponsored by PKF O'Connor Davies, accountants and advisors who understand the unique challenges and opportunities in the manufacturing sector. We hope you gain valuable insights and inspiration from today's discussion. If you enjoyed this episode, make sure to subscribe to our podcast and leave us a review on your favorite podcast platform.